Welcome to this course, Introduction to Cybersecurity Literacy. This is Lesson 23, Wireless Internet Security Threats. In this lecture, we're going to introduce some of the most common security threats that wireless users have to deal with. We'll discuss the following four wireless security threats. Sniffing, rogue routers, evil twin routers, and unauthorized connections. At the beginning here, I'm going to remind you that these threats apply to Wi-Fi internet, but they do not apply to mobile cellular networks, which use different technologies besides Wi-Fi. So when you're using Wi-Fi on your phone, this lesson applies. But when you're using data on your phone, it probably doesn't. Wireless security threat number one is sniffing. Have you ever seen a movie where somebody is having a private telephone conversation on a landline telephone, and then somebody else picks up a different phone somewhere else in the house and eavesdrops on that conversation? Wireless sniffing is a similar kind of eavesdropping that can happen on public, wireless internet connections. If you're in, say, a coffee shop surfing the web, a cybercriminal within range of that wireless network can use a variety of methods to intercept the signals between your computer and the wireless router. They can intercept the information that is sent from the wireless router to your computer. And they can also intercept the information that your computer sends back to the wireless router. By default, computers are configured not to sniff, but there is free and legal software that can reconfigure a computer to run in what is known as promiscuous mode. A promiscuous computer sniffs all of the wireless traffic on a network. For those of you who are watching this lesson as part of a class that uses this textbook, there's a diagram in chapter 9 that illustrates what we're talking about. We'll look at that diagram here. If you aren't using this textbook, don't worry about it, just follow along with the lesson. This illustration shows how computers normally function on a network, that is, when they're not sniffing traffic. Over on the right side of the page, we have a wireless router that has been named MSP Wireless. We also have three computers connected to this wireless network, user 1, user 2, and Alice's computer. The red dotted line here represents Alice's computer sending a packet of information to the router. It's requesting the homepage for CNN.com. Normally, this information goes out in all directions and is readable by every device on the network. But computers are normally configured to ignore this kind of information, so only Alice's computer and the router are actually involved in the transaction. User 1 and User 2 are configured to ignore Alice's computer's Wi-Fi traffic. Here's an illustration that shows the same situation, only one computer has been configured into promiscuous mode. When Alice submits her password, which is the word bananas, to the website that she's trying to log into, her password information is available to every device on the wireless network. User number one is still ignoring this information, which is what he or she is supposed to do. The router is still listening to this information, which is what it's supposed to do. But user number two has now turned into sniffer number one. This user is secretly observing Alice's login credentials. Alice can prevent sniffing in several ways. One is to use a secure wireless network. On a secure wireless network, all users on the network still have access to each other's internet traffic, but this traffic is encrypted so that other users aren't able to read it. Another way to prevent sniffing is to stick to websites that use HTTPS. HTTPS is a set of communication rules that some internet connected devices use to communicate with each other. HTTPS encrypts all traffic between users and a given web page. Again, the traffic is still sniffable on the wireless network, but it's garbled by the encryption. Finally, users may negate sniffing by using a virtual private network or VPN. I won't go into the details of VPNs here, but suffice it to say that VPNs are another method of internet encryption that renders internet traffic unreadable to all but designated members of a network. So, in short, the solution to sniffing is encryption. All three of these techniques are different ways of encrypting wireless traffic. The radio waves that carry your wireless internet signal will always be out in the public airspace for anybody to intercept, but if your data is encrypted, it will be meaningless and useless to those potential sniffers. Wireless security threat number two is rogue routers. A rogue router is an illegitimate router. Attackers set up rogue routers so that they can prey on casual internet users who connect to those routers. 
a cyber criminal might come along and set up a rogue router anywhere where people expect there to be free Wi-Fi. So, for example, airports are popular locations for rogue routers. Attackers will give the rogue routers plausible names, like free airport Wi-Fi, so that they can attract users to connect to them. But once users are connected, the attackers simply use those rogue routers to sniff the wireless traffic on them. They might even ask users to set up user accounts for the network, and in this way, the attackers try to snatch usernames, passwords, and other identification information from unwitting users. In fact, because some airports charge for Wi-Fi, some attackers will even go so far as to charge users to work on the rogue routers. Users will pay these fees because they were expecting to pay a fee anyway, so the victims are charged a fee to be cyber-attacked. Rogue routers are particularly tricky at travel hubs like airports and bus stations. In those situations, travelers are vulnerable. They have little time and very few resources to spend on their own cyber defense. Furthermore, the attackers that set up routers in transportation hubs may also be travelers themselves. They might not live anywhere near the place that they're attacking, and after a couple of hours of sniffing and fishing, they might simply hop on a plane and fly to the next targeted airport. But although rogue routers are particularly nasty at travel hubs, they are by no means limited to travel hubs. Rogue routers might appear anywhere where you would expect to find a potential cluster of wireless networks. Maybe coffee shops, public squares, apartment buildings, or other places like that. So you might be thinking, gee, it sounds like any public router could be a rogue router. And it's certainly possible. Between rogue routers and unsecured networks, public Wi-Fi connections can be pretty dicey. Now this isn't to say that you should avoid them entirely, but you should definitely proceed with caution anytime you connect to a public Wi-Fi network. Wireless security threat number three is evil twin routers. A close relative to the rogue router is the evil twin router. Like a rogue router, an evil twin router is a router that has been set up for the purpose of attacking users. With an evil twin router, cyber criminals take advantage of people who allow their computers to automatically connect to a public network. For example, a college or university might have a campus-wide wireless internet connection named University Wi-Fi. Routers connecting to that network are probably installed in strategic locations all across campus. Attackers will sometimes set up alternate routers with the exact same name as a known legitimate network. So if your computer is set up to automatically connect to the network named Library Wi-Fi, it will connect to whatever router it finds with that name. If there is more than one router with that name, it will connect to the one with the strongest signal. If the evil twin router happens to be the strongest connection from where you're working, your computer might automatically connect to the evil twin router without you knowing it. Once you're connected to the evil twin router, you are susceptible to all of the familiar attacks, especially wireless sniffing. Wireless security threat number four is unauthorized connections. So far, we have discussed wireless networks from the perspective of a user who's connecting to a publicly available network. Now let's consider an important security issue that comes up for wireless router owners who manage their own wireless networks at home. This issue is unauthorized connections. If you have an unsecure wireless network at home, you leave your home network open to unauthorized connections by neighbors or anybody else within the broadcast radius of your router. This practice of connecting to unsecured wireless networks without the owner's permission is sometimes called piggybacking. In many cases, piggybacking is more of a nuisance than a threat. That's because having extra users connected to your router can slow down your internet connection. But there can be other costs associated with piggybacking as well. Financial costs, security costs, and legal costs. You could incur financial costs from piggybacking if your internet plan includes a monthly limit on the amount of data that you can download or upload. If you have a data limit, then you probably don't want to unknowingly share your internet connection with piggybackers, such as neighbors or people parked on the street near your home. There can also be security costs to piggybacking. Unauthorized network users might be able to access your router's settings and change them to make your network less secure. And as per usual, you have to consider the possibility of sniffing attacks from other users connected to the network. Perhaps most importantly, there are potential legal consequences to piggybacking. If somebody connects to the internet from your router, then all of their online activity can be traced back to your network. Any illegal activities that they participate in, 
such as uploading or downloading malware, pirating media, or downloading illegal pornography will appear to be happening in your home. For example, back in 2011, the FBI raided the home of a man in Buffalo, New York on the suspicion that he was downloading child pornography. The ensuing investigation eventually revealed that a neighbor had used the man's unsecure wireless connection to download the pornography. So fortunately, in this case, the innocent man didn't get into serious trouble, but his unsecure wireless network made him a suspect in a very serious criminal investigation that could have had dire consequences if he hadn't been vindicated. Even if your neighbors are all good, trustworthy people, it still pays to secure your home wireless network. Some cyber criminals drive around neighborhoods looking for unsecure networks that they can exploit. Okay, let's review. We've introduced four wireless security threats. Sniffing, rogue routers, evil twin routers, and unauthorized connections. All of these threats are relevant to Wi-Fi internet connections, but they don't necessarily apply to mobile cellular networks. In the next lesson, we'll discuss public Wi-Fi connections and talk a little more about what you can do to use them safely.